Good morning. Denise Dryden here. I'm live um, from Bainbridge Island. And I found, I'm dropping everything. Um, I found this great little indoor mall that's out of the wind and out of the rain. And it has some sparkle lights. So I thought that was perfect for today because it's 32 degrees out. It's cold. It's supposed to snow. So uh, it's different than Montana, but it's definitely starting to feel a lot like Montana. It's kind of nice. Um, so today is the 24th, and the 24th means that we're on the eve of what we celebrate as Christmas, you know, here in the States for a lot um, of, uh, a lot of people, and, and not for some. <laughs> there are so many other holidays going on. So we're also three days after the winter solstice, which means that we are three days into the beginning of light, starting to, to sort of brighten up and uh, heading towards the peak in June again. One of my favorite parts of winter. Um, two days after Mercury went direct, so we've been in Mercury retrograde for weeks and weeks and weeks, and it's been a really difficult one compared to some of the other ones. So I was really thankful that this came direct. And we are eight days before the end of 2017. So this is the time that I thought, why don't we just bring all of this together on this, this is part six of Holidays Through the Eyes of the Sensitive. Let's bring it all together and focus on joy because joy is really the peak. It's the perfection of everything we've been talking about with sensitives, with knowing how to access feelings and, and, and gravitate towards the things that really matter. Joy, absolute joy. So joy, words that came up when I was Googling, yeah, I was trying to give you a perspective. Um, happiness, absolute happiness, delight, glee, exuberance, um, euphoria, rapture, ecstasy, pleasure, love, belly laughs, giggling. I mean, these are things that when we really access that, it just fills us. It fills us with bubbles. It fills us with, with, with ease. It fills us with um, presence of whatever happens is just fun. So let's just enjoy it. So how do we access that? Um, you know, how do you access joy? Think about that for a minute. You know, what is it that you do and how often every day, every week, every month, every year, can you step in and go, there it is. I'm in complete joy. I can feel it in my body. Do you know what that feels like? Do you know why it happens? Can you recreate it? Can you set up scenarios where you can allow yourself to just slip into that state of joy? And, and, and I think that's probably, you know, what we were, what I was working towards with this holiday series was, um, you know, we did five up until this point. And the first one was boots on the ground. How do you get present? How do you really make sure your feet are on the ground and you're present for yourself and for the ones that love you so that, you know, they can lean in or you can just relax. I'm present. I'm here. The second one we did was reframing the family. Taking the family history into places where we can sort of look at it from the eagle eye and go, oh, I get that. I understand. Which releases a lot of our pain and our hate and some of those things that, or, or those those uncomfortable tensions that exist in some of our family systems where we deny ourselves happiness and glee and, and ecstasy and all of these things when we're around different family because we have these, this pervasive sort of line of, of memories that come in. So how do we honor ourselves and, and see them differently? See them with compassion. Oh, I get why they do that. I don't have to take that personally. So the third one was emotional labor. Understanding as a sensitive how much more is going on at any given time and not thinking that there's something wrong with you or that there's something that doesn't work, but just knowing that, man, I have a superpower. I'm not just here, but I'm here. And there are a lot of things going on. And when events come up, I have to work really hard. And so knowing that, how do I build in time for myself to relax, to be present, to, to let joy in, right? So it's, it's 
taking that emotional labor and knowing that it doesn't have to be labor, it just has to be intention, right? So the fourth one is wants and needs. Giving ourselves permission to step away from the things that don't work and really getting in touch with, ah, this is what I need in my life. This is what works for me. This is how I can create a holiday season that works for me and my kids or me and my partner or my dog, any of us that we need to be able to get out and do something that works for us, how to give ourselves permission to create that, right? And then last week, we I addressed um, finding refuge. What happens when distress happens? What happens when it gets a little chattery and we have to figure out how to get to a calmer, easier place? And then to, to stay in that place of refuge and joy, right? So we've been sort of building blocks on all of these different areas. And what I came up with as sort of the accumulation of, you know, holidays or anything through the eyes of the sensitive, right, is that there are going to be ways that we can create freedom. Freedom from distress, freedom from overscheduling, freedom from self-doubt, freedom from disempowerment. So, you know, when we have freedom, joy is present. So joy means that we can create freedom. The second thing that I came up with was presence. You know, I work with Alan Seal and Transformational Presence, and that's part of the coaching that I do. And that is really um, succinct about how do you take, use your breath and your awareness and drop in and drop in and drop in until you're just in your body and you're looking around and you can see things with clarity, you can see things with patience, you can see things, you can notice things for the first time. So presence is when all of you is there. And so well, learn what that technique is. Bring yourself to whatever that might be, right? Whatever that might be, bring yourself to presence. Uh, no attachment. Third one, no attachment at all to plans or something or someone else. Let them, let plans unfold. Have an idea. Yeah, we're not talking about living in la-la land where there's no, no time or anything. But when you're there, let it unfold. Because if you schedule something and you're in the process of thinking, what's next? What's next? What do I have to do tonight? What does my schedule look like tomorrow? You're not. You're not there. And you're not, atta you're not, you're not present and you don't have the freedom that we've talked about, and you're attached to making sure that that other thing down the road happens. So joy, you can't have joy when there's attachment. Joy doesn't say I'm gonna go sit in the most perfect um, holiday decorated area, in the perfect weather, with the perfect people, and I'm gonna create joy. It doesn't work that way. We just say I'm gonna show up, right? I'm gonna be there, and if joy happens, it happens, and it's gonna be wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. This little fountain just turned on behind me. Um, the other part that joy has, joy is a feeling. It's a feeling. We have to be able to access our feelings in order to access joy, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, it means that feelings are feelings. They could be anger. They could be sadness. They could be exuberance. They could be playfulness. Um, ah, pure joy. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> I'm on Facebook, so these little comments scroll um, up as I'm talking. Thank you, Andre, for that. Um, if we can't feel, we can't feel joy. So we have to sort of, I use the analogy all the time that, about feelings, that if we're afraid of our feelings and we don't want to access them, they're kind of like that, that you know, I'm using the analogy from the 70s, a can of warm Coca-Cola that used to like flop around in the back of your car or the back of your pickup truck, right? And it's the summer and you think, ugh. And you pop that lid and it just goes, right? All of the emotions are going to come out fast and hard. And after all the bubbles settle, there's still some significant soda left in that can, right? So that's what we're talking about with feelings. We have to start accessing all of our feelings. We have to access anything that works anytime and then use those to sort of segue over to happiness, joy, playfulness everything else. I'm right in front of the store and they're trying to get in. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then the last piece is letting go. Absolutely letting go. 
letting go of time, letting go of expectations, letting go of you know what you hold in your shoulders, letting go of what you want to happen, letting go and going, well, if I just completely relax into this moment, what if something shows up and surprises me that's different than what I thought? Because we think we're these creators, but if we try to create from something we know and something we keep playing over and over again, joy doesn't have an opportunity to show up there. It's like, oh, I've been there, done that. That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. As opposed to, oh, wow, this is amazing. That's the kind of joy we're talking about. So I'm going to keep going back to the fourfold way, you know, those four pillars that keep us always in the opportunity to be, have the maximum experience, which is number one, show up. You know, don't just sort of phone it in. When you go to the grocery store, show up. Look at everybody in the eye. Look at the things on the shelf. Touch things. You know, like play with the, play with the labels. Notice how they set the store up. Notice how the kids are acting in the grocery cart next to you. Smile at them. Show up. Because if you show up, you're in your body. You're present, right? So show up. The second thing is pay attention. Notice what you notice. Notice if there's a little, like my favorite thing is when I'm standing in line at the grocery store and there's a little kid in the cart going like, hi. And I just look at them and they go, hi, and their eyes open up. And then I can just relax and smile right back at them. That to me is pure joy. I'm in my body. I made eye contact with this innocent soul and life just expanded. Yesterday I went for a walk in the Grand Forest. I had no idea how long it was, what it was gonna do. I just knew that I needed to be warm. I needed to have water just in case, in a journal, in case the sun came out or there was something to do. And then to walk through it and go, oh, notice, what am I seeing? I'm seeing moss on the trees. I'm seeing big trees that I can put my hands on. I'm noticing the little babbling of a brook. And all of a sudden, I'm sort of bouncing along in that state of joy because I had no expectation of what that forest was going to be like. It was magical. I called it the enchanted forest. <laughs> so pay attention. The third one is speak your truth. You know, advocate for yourself. Always advocate. Know, when, know what your truth is when it shows up. I absolutely love these kinds of experiences, right? So then your truth is, those experiences matter to me. When someone suggests something else, go, yeah, I don't really, those experiences are not things I want to do. Like, you know, like, this is a big Seahawks area. Everyone wants to go sit somewhere and watch the game. That's not an experience that I like. It's not even one that I want to do. So, no. You know, speak my truth. That's not something that, 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 that works for me. So I'm going to go sit in the coffee shop and I'm going to read a book. And I'm going to have the kind of experience that I want. I want to speak my truth, right? And then that other one is releasing expectations, which we've talked about all the time. Let go of the end result. You can't create something that you haven't already created. So you have to show up and let yourself be surprised. Surprise is an emotional thing. It's like, oh. I couldn't have even imagined this. And then the smile shows up on your face, and then you have glee, and then you have exuberance, and then you have all of those things that represent joy. Now, the other piece is to follow the energy. You know, when you show up, when you're paying attention, and when something pops up in front of you and it starts to take you in a direction you haven't thought of before, if you follow it, usually there's joy at the other end. I can guarantee it. If you follow something and you go, oh, I didn't see that before. There's moments, and, and joy starts in like five, 10 second moments, and then 30 seconds, and then minutes, and then hours where you can just hang out in it. But it's an emotion that we have to cultivate, and we have to allow ourselves to step into and experience. So seek access to your joy. Look for it everywhere. Give yourself permission to find joy, to live in joy. And, and so one of the pieces that works the best for me always is to just breathe and drop down and go, am I present? Am I present? If I'm not present, I have no access to joy. If I'm present, 
anything can happen. So for these last eight days of 2017, for these, these beginning days of light where we can manifest anything, what if we put our focus on creating more joy within our bodies, within our systems that our bodies interact with, within the world that we live in? I think we can change the world if we can access joy. So thank you so much for watching this series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think, and this is what I do. Um, we talk about all sorts of different things, and I have lots of tools that can take you into accessing joy, accessing freedom, accessing presence. My name is Denise Dryden. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com and have a wonderful holiday. Bye-bye.